Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, welcome to Wednesday night. Who was here last week? Did you guys enjoy all the games and everything? I know I was watching them. I'm like, I missed out on riding the bull. That's okay. Next month, we'll see what we do. Well, anyways, it's so good to be back, and I believe that God is going to bless us tonight. And I, I am actually including myself in, in this message because I'm preaching to myself, right? Because you have to live it for yourself. But one of the things that I pray today is that he not only blesses you tonight, but he will encourage you and challenge you. Because we need to not only be blessed, we need to be challenged to be able to believe. So I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that we recognize that this is holy ground. And it is holy ground because you are here. You are present right in this moment. You are so close to us in whatever we need in this time. Now we are able to reach out to you and you will answer our prayer. So I thank you, Father, for every person here tonight. I thank you that they will, they will be blessed, encouraged, and challenged by your word. And it will bring such healing, wholeness, and transformation into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Awesome. Well, have you seen the new app that is trending right now? Yes. That the, you're getting old, right? So I didn't want to do it, but I did it. I, I did it. And... Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures because we all want to mature. We all want to get old, right? I want to, I've been praying to God, Lord, Lord let me live a hundred to, to be 120 years, right? But then after seeing my picture, I was like, I look like a prune. <laughs> but good news, I, my great-grandmother, she actually uh, went to heaven when she was almost 100 years old. And she didn't look like that. So I'm like, no, I have hope. So don't be moved by that, by the app. But I want to show you some pictures, some people that allow me to show their pictures. Because I think it's funny. That, look at that. He looks good. Okay, next. Look at Frank. Frank. Where's Frank? It's okay. It's okay. That's just, oh, my God. <laughs> he looks like my dad. But my dad looks good, so he's almost 80, so we have good genes. Oh, Elliot. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And this is me. We're shameless here. Look at me. Well, I, you know, I'm vain. So I did one close-up, and I look like a prune. So I'm like, no, I, I chose one that is far away. So you can still see me, but yet, you know. But it's funny, we all want to grow up, right? We want to mature in the things of God, and God is expecting us to grow up, to face up. So the message for tonight is called Face Up, not the app, but up, right? To fix our eyes on Jesus. He didn't create us just to stay stuck or to be in a place where we never from, go from glory to glory. And what I have found out in my years walking with the Lord, that going from glory to glory hurts. Because facing up it's, it's another word to say faith up. And God has called us to live by faith and not by sight. And let me tell you, that's easy said than done. It's so easy to say, stay in faith, stay in hope. And all oh, hell is breaking loose. And you're like, how am I going to do it? And I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you that tonight I'm going to give you great news. So in all seriousness, I know that you need to come to terms tonight and say, God wants me to grow up. He wants you to mature in him. You know, I wish there was an app, really, where I could get, get filters, right? And then every morning you wake up, and I'm like, I'm going to be mature in Christ. And Jesus would give us apps, right? And then this morning you become stronger. You become more perseverant, and there's an apps for all those things. I'm going to tell you there is no such a thing as apps. But there's such things as the word of God. And we need to dig in, we need to believe, and we need to recognize that he is with us, that he is for us. And no matter what you're facing today, we get to win. We already won. I don't feel like a winner, but I have chosen to believe according to the word of God who I am. And you, that's a settlement that you need to do in your own head, in your own mind, in your own heart, and agree with the word of God. So I'm going to give you my first scripture, and it's in Ephesians 4, 13 to 15. Wow, I need to make my font even bigger. I'm going to wear my glasses. 
can we filter this? It says this, till we all, until we all come to that unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man or a perfect woman, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should not longer be children, tossed to and fro and carry about with in every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. You know how hard that is to speak the truth in love? You're like, no, it's easy for me. Liar. May grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. It says that we need to speak the truth in love. And we are expected to grow. You know, we always say growing pains, right? Because it hurts. God wants us to develop. No one arrives, like if you feel like you have already arrived, there's nothing that you have to change. You feel like, you know, I'm good reading my Bible. I'm good praying. I'm good praising God. I'm, I'm good inviting people. That's all and good and everything, and it's part of being a Christian. But I'm talking about developing and growing in the character of Jesus Christ, which that's a different ball game. It is painful. It is painful to grow, and it is painful to mature. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. You know what? It is painful because I always think that in order to grow, there are seasons in your life, right? There, thank God there are seasons in your life. So if you're always in pain, if you're always okay, maybe you're stuck in a season. Because even God created the four seasons in life, right? We, we spring, summer, fall, and winter, right? So if you feel like your life is in winter, then it's time to take a, a, a look unto Jesus and realize, am I growing in him or am I staying a child? Because as we grow, there's a lot of responsibility in growing. You know, people talk about millennials now, right? Like, it's the worst generation. I don't believe that. I think there is a great generation, right? Innovators, creators, and they just have to fix a few little things, right? Like responsibility, right? <laughs> Getting jobs, you know? But we can teach those things. You learn those things, but the creativity is already there. Right? So the creativity is there, the, the believing for huge dreams, right? Like, I heard someone, I'm not going to say a name, this person was talking about, you know, when he gets a mansion and gets a house. I'm like, and in my head, because I didn't know this person, but I was listening, you know, when your ears drop? I was like, you're kidding yourself. He doesn't even have a job. <laughs> but I thought at least he's able to, to, to dream, you know what? I'm not going to criticize that because we're good at criticizing people. Like, what? They, they should be responsible. Well, at least they're dreaming. Are we dreaming? Have you stopped dreaming? Have you stopped believing because it's got too hard? So God wants us to grow. He wants us to develop us. You know, I remember when I was growing up and I was always in pain. I was really short. You're like, you, we were still short. Um. So I, that's why I wear high heels. Do you like my high heels? <laughs> they're they're four, four inches. I have to. So I have to. I just have to. If not, if I don't wear them, then I'll be here, right? But, but they're saying, I remember being in pain in my bones and everything. And they're like, it's because you're growing. I was like, I never saw it. But I was growing. And, and so, so growing needs to, not only is it painful, but you need to make some certain decisions that might be difficult. But you have to go back. If you're the child of a child of God, you have to go back to the word of God. You always have to go back to the word of God. I love uh, this past uh, Sunday message where the, the, who was here Sunday? If not, watch, watch the video. But it says the guy said, uh, Lou something, Sam Perini uh, said, if you can take it, you can make it. How much do you want to grow in the Lord? How far and how, how you, the process, it depends on you. And I really believe it. I hate to say it, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it depends on you. Time does not heal. But time shows if you have been healed. Time will show the glory of God or will show our own destruction because we choose it. But I'm here to tell you that God wants you to choose him tonight. 
and I'm going to give you uh, another scripture. And we're going to have fun tonight. I'm going to do some dancing and, 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 and singing. Like I said, we don't like processes. You know, I thought to myself, you need to accept. We need to have a radical acceptance. Not only of where we are in life, but of who God is in our lives. We need to accept. Uh, my husband has a saying, and I used to hate it, but I now have come to terms to, with it. He would always say, it is what it is. I hate it. I hate that saying. I even bought something for him. It says, it's, it's a little plaque, but it's wooden. And I remember bringing it to him and say, hey, this is your saying. But the same I want to like, right? I don't like the saying. It is what it is. You don't want to ever accept where you are, but until you accept where you are, you're able to move forward. You can. We, a lot of us are not growing because we don't accept where we are in life. I should be ahead in life. If I'm a child of God, I should be ahead in life. I, I should be more mature. I should have more money in the bank. My kids should be like, whatever you think, I should be ahead. And I don't know how I got here. I tell you how you got here. By refusing to grow up. And growing up in God, the beautiful thing is it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. How long do you know God? Do you know that? I know people that are 40 years. They said, I've been 40 years in the Lord, but they still live the same way. That when they started 40 years ago, being mature and growing in, in the eyes of God and facing up with God, it means that you are going to see life in the eyes of his own eyes. You're, you're going to see life in a way that you can say, I can win this. Do you know how hard that is? But not just say it to say it, but, but to believe it. To believe it that, you know what, no matter how hard this, is, this, this situation is, my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above according to the power that dwells inside of me. You know, our youth is going to camp. They're going to camp. Bless all of our teachers and volunteers are going with them. I know that they're going to have an encounter with God because you need an encounter with God. We all need an encounter with God. Something that when he comes and touches you and you know that it was him. And no matter what people say, no matter what other it says, no matter what your, whatever the voice is or, or the critical voice in your own self. You know when you have a moment with God that you cannot be shaken. And I'm going to tell you, if you have a youth and you're not sending him, you're missing out. Or her. Did I say him? It's for all. So, so just send your kid to camp. And I'm not promoting this. Believe me, I'm not promoting it because we're get, gaining anything. No, actually, we're giving. This is who we are. We're investing what we believe. And I know what God is going to do in that camp. And I know what God is going to do this night if you're willing, just willing to believe that our God is bigger than your problem. It has taken me years you know, because we all go through seasons, right? In the last two years, I had to settle that in my heart and believe, you know what? I am in the best time of my life because I am, I am in the will of God and I am in the right place and with the right people. And I need to mature. And I need to grow. And I need to show up. You know, sometimes being brave and just growing in God, it means that you dress up, you show up. You get up, you dress up, and you show up. That's being brave. You know that that's believing God many times. When you don't feel like coming to church because everything, hell is breaking loose. When your family maybe is not in the best place, but yet you choose to show up for God because he's always willing to do exceedingly abundantly whatever we're asking him for. But it takes God to believe that. It's not easy. The gospel of Jesus is not easy. It's simple. It says, forgive your brothers. It sounds so simple, right? But when it comes to it, when it comes to chew it and live it and exercise it, that's a different story. You know, I am, uh, go to Colossians 22, 6, and 7. And I'm going to read it before I go to my next point. <clears throat> 
I'm not even making more. Just follow me. Jesus said, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus said, pick up your cross and what? Follow me. Tonight, I have a question for you. Are you a follower of Jesus or are you a fan? You're not a fan. It's just like, yay, you get all excited, right? Like, I'm going to disclose this, and you know, I'm sure you guys already know it, but I am a follower of the Patriots. You know the Patriots? The winners all the time. Nobody's, yeah, yeah huh? only one person. Two people. Yes, yes. Our, our following is growing. We're making disciples. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Someone asked me, so what are you going to do with Brady leaves the bunch? Uh, you see that? I came up with that. But they asked me, what are you going to do with Brady leaves? Are you going to choose another team? I'm like, excuse me, I'm not a fan. I'm a follower. Because when you're a fan, it's easy to to choose transfer, you know what? They're not doing well. I'm gonna go to that. That I'm gonna choose another game. I'm gonna choose another church. I'm gonna choose another spouse. I'm gonna choose another children. You choose whatever you want because it's not going well. <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> but I have decided. You know, am I am I gonna be a follower of Jesus, and I'm gonna let my storms and my problems and everything derail me and change teams, right? Because Team Jesus, and all of a sudden you're Team Devil. It is. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible says that the father of, a lie, of all lies is the devil. So if I'm so invested in believing a lie, then who is your daddy? Who's your daddy? Tell the person who's you, who's your daddy? No, don't do it. Don't do it. Like, don't do it like I did it. Just say, who is your daddy? Because it's easy. It's easy. We're easily sway, sway by the waves, right? Oh, believe me, I could have been a great hula dancer in life. <laughs> sway by the pain. And you're like, it looks so easy. No, I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm hurting because I'm not flexible. You know what I mean? Why are you not flexible? Because I'm not working out. You know, maturing in Christ, it means that we get to face up and look at our lives and examine our lives. And, you know, there's nothing that the Bible says that when we read our Bible, it should be examined as it should, look, it should be looking unto us. So whenever you read the Bible and someone comes into mind that you should give that scripture to someone, that's the scripture for you. Like when I read the Bible, I have made a decision that I'm not going to read the Bible to get a message. You know, that's a hard decision. Because sometimes God gives me the great revelations, and then I'm like, God, I'm going to preach it. This sounds great. He's like, that was for you. <laughs> my like, Lord, are you sh telling me this to grow up? Yeah, grow up, Virginia. Grow up in me. Wouldn't it be ridiculous if I will still be giving the baba or like a bottle to my children today? 124 and the other 120? But many of us can even handle the word of God. Can you handle it? God wants you to be able to handle whatever comes your way and know that he is with you. That he got, he got you. He got your back, your front, your side, your Everything. You know, I remember saying this uh, not too long ago, maybe last year. I said, I am in the deepest pit. You know when you're in those, have you ever been in a pit of darkness? And then the other day, God says, you know, Re Virginia, remember when you felt, when you felt, right? Because it's a feeling. Remember when you felt like I left you and you were alone in the dark pit? And then you went from a pit to a tunnel and you were saying that you couldn't even see me? You know, he said to me, Virginia, I was there with you. And I went back to the word. That's how I know it's the word. You have to have the word in you. If not, how is, God maybe is not speaking because you don't know the word. One thing I have done good in 22 years, I have put the word in me. So when I didn't feel like reading it, pop, it came out. Because God is going to do what he's going to do in your life.
and he loves you and he's for you and he wants your victory so I was like yeah I remember I remember Lord it hurt me and he says and he went back to the, where I read in the Bible where it says that we need to understand the love the love uh, the depth of his love the width of his love in the depth so he says no matter how big your pit is I'm, I'm, I'm deeper than that my hand is already there ready to catch you we're never gonna fall out of his hand do you understand that you're never gonna fall out of his love he loves you and he wants you to return back to him and believe him for your wholeness your healings and your deliverance yes there is a process and yes there is a process because I always have to think like okay Jesus came and he lived for 30 years he could have started his ministry at 12 remember he was at the temple he was preaching he could have done it then but no he had to wait to be developed to 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 allow God to to mature him and then when he was around 30, he started the ministry. Then there were three, three years in the process of making disciples. Why didn't he just lay hands on them and say, okay, you're delivered. You have this knowledge. Would that be awesome if he's God? But you know why he didn't do it? It's because he came to show us that we are able to do it because he was, he was made in, we were made in his likeness. And he came to show us that it is possible. That I don't care if it takes you 30 years and you, God, doesn't have t a timeline. I'm like, sometimes like, God, come down. Come on. Come down to my timeline. God is not going to come down for your timeline. He is an eternal God. He is forever present. So our salvation is always present in the time that we need it the most. So Colossians 2, 6, 7 says, Therefore, as you have, be, have, you have received Jesus Christ the Lord, walk in union with who? And he says, reflecting his character in the things you do and say. Sometimes we say the right things, but we live like hell. May I tell you that? Oh, we sound so good. I can quote the scripture like back and forth. You sing every song. You look so nice in the outside. You have 20 Bibles. And in each room, you open one in chapter 91, chapter 23. And in the kids' room, you have Ephesians where it says, uh, children submit to your parents, right? You even tailor it. Right? No, it says we have to be in union with him. And to be in unity with God, it means believing, like uh, getting uh, rooted with, with your values that maybe were given to you that were twisted. Sometimes we just inherit values that they were not the truth. And, and it's not we're going to go back and we're going to hate our parents or whoever raised you. Like, I hate you, I hate you. That, God doesn't want that. But God wants to tell you, like, hey, it doesn't matter where you come from. What it matters is who you are in this moment with me. Oh, I may not know the whole thing. But it's worth it. God wants you to know that he is for you. And I know maybe I'm repeating myself because I'm believing that God wants to get through to you tonight. He wants to break the barriers that you have created in your own life. And you know what? In order for him to break the barriers, you need to give him permission. Because he has given us a free will. And he said, you get to choose. You get to choose to walk in union with me, reflecting his characters in the things that you do and say, living lives that lead others away from sin. Is your life, the life that you're living right now, what you're saying and doing, are you leading people away from sin or to sin? Ouch, that hurt. Growing pains, my friends. It hurts, right? Think about it in your family. Are you, are you getting your kids or your spouse or your extended family, are we getting them closer to God or are we hammering them like da, 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 da. We have to examine ourselves and, and just face up. You see, am I, am I growing in God or am I being stuck? It says, having been deeply rooted in him and, no, and now being continually built up in him and becoming increasingly more established in your faith that as you were taught and overflowing with gratitude. Do you know it says being rooted, being rooted. Uh, Lori got me so, thank you, Lori, Lori. 
I'm gonna miss you. We're gonna miss you as a church. Glory is moving. We pray for her on on Sunday. She's going to New York, but she brought us some some uh, plants. So my husband has taken on gardening. You know, you like you say you just say ooh. He's taking on gardening. He has a he has the green thumb. So, and I have I saw them like I always loved the idea of gardening. Like, I love it. I love the flowers. Like, when Alexa and I, I think I said this story before, like, we always, when she was little, when we got our first house, we said, we're going to plant it. We're going to do everything. And then we bought all the plants, right? And then we just time to transplant them and put them on the, on, on the soil, on the ground. I was messy. I needed to make a hole. Then my nails were dirty. I'm like, I'm not planting this. Let the gardener do it. And seriously, I asked the gardener to do it. The idea was awesome. And so the other day, my husband was planting this, you know, some people give us plants. So he was, ah, he was so messy and he bothered me. I'm like, oh, you're too messy. Watch for your shoes. Like, I want him to plant, but I don't want him to get dirty. <laughs> Babe, you need to plant the plant. You know how you get, like, as a spouse, right? You need to pl plant it, plant it now before it gets hot, before the plant dies. And then he comes and he doesn't care about what he's wearing. And he gets on the, on the floor, and then he's wearing, like, white jeans. And it's not me, but it's bugging me. I said, shouldn't you? See, there we go. Like, oh, we're so good at giving advice to other people, but we don't do it. I said, shouldn't you get, like, shorts? Like, get sandals? I said, okay, it's okay. I'm not going to get dirty. I'm like, hello. You're going to plant this thing. You're going to root this thing on the ground. So you're going to get dirty. So being rooted and planted in Jesus is not an easy thing. You're going to have to deal with people. And where there's people, there is opportunities. <laughs> hey, I used to say other things. But you see how God is growing me? I was like, Virginia, where there is people, there is opportunity for me to grow. But you're still right. <laughs> because before I used to say, where there is people, there is poop, right? So that means I have grown. I have grown. I have matured. That doesn't mean that there's no problems. Yeah, but that's an opportunity to what? To grow and to develop into the character of Jesus Christ. Because I have to forgive. Because I have to love. You see how it hurts me? Ugh. I even need water. Yeah, wait a minute. But you see the point. We all want maturity. Like, I want to grow old. And I thought, yeah, that would be awesome to get to 120. But I still want to wear high heels. <laughs> I don't want wrinkles. And there's no amount of plastic surgery that will make you look like you're 50 when you're 120. So I'm believing God for new technology, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lord, please provide me with that technology so I look good, right? But it's silly. Like, if you want to look good now, like, whatever decisions you're making in your present, that's going to be your future. The moment I saw my picture, I believe me, I had a mask. I put on a mask, like, to hydrate my, my, my wrinkles. I drank so much water. And I was like, keep that picture, Virginia, so you will be reminded that if you want to look good at 120, you better start drinking some water. You better make some changes in your health and start working out. Right? We're expecting an amazing future, but we continue to make the same choice and stay in the same places. And it says, overflowing with gratitude. Are you overflowing with gratitude tonight? Do you know that we're expected when you, that, that's the measure of being, of being a, a grown woman of God, a grown man of God, according to the eyes of Jesus, according to the eyes of God, that we overflow in gratitude. When was the last time that you were overflowing with gratitude? <laughs> Seriously. And I'm not talking about when you're being blessed. I'm talking about when you are not doing well. When did you say, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity? James 6 and James 1, verse 2 and 3 says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Like, it is so hard 
to count it all joy, but it's a decision. And that doesn't mean you're all smiles. People don't think that counting it all joy means like you're always smiling. Have you seen the people? <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. It means that you, you choose to see it God's way. That you choose to believe that right now it looks like hell, but I know that my end is going to be good. We need to grow in gratitude. It's easy. It's a different story to be grateful when everything is going down. When you lost your job. Maybe you lost that loved one. Maybe you got divorced and that wasn't in your plans. When you got into the biggest storm of your life and then you were shifted, you were moved, you were persuaded because it was hard. So what God is trying to tell you tonight, do not, do not sell out. Do not sell out the promise of God and the plan of God because of in the storm that you're in right now. Because we sell out, my friends. I have sold out before. You're like, oh my gosh. You know what that means? It's, that means that I choose to believe that my storm, that my problem is bigger than my God. That is, that's what it means to sell out the promise of God. He wants us to be consistent that we choose him. And once we make the decision, I don't know how, but I'm going to hold fast to his word. The one person that sold his birthright, remember Esau? In the Bible, it's in Genesis, I think, Genesis 25. He sold his birthright for a moment because he let his emotions, he said, read it, it's in, I think, uh, Genesis 25. And he said, he told his brother Jacob, you know, and he was just an opportunist. But he says, you know, I am so exhausted. Uh, he said, I'm starving. I'm famished. You know, sometimes we're like exaggerate, right? Because our emotions are so awesome. And, for, and it's awesome. God wants us to feel the emotions. God wants us to embrace them. But God doesn't want us to follow them. He wants us to follow Jesus. But he sold his birthright. And he said he despised us since then. Have you sold your God's plan that God God has a plan for your life tailored for your life have you sold it for a bowl of beans for something so small because the enemy is going to magnify our problems the enemy is going to magnify our trials the enemy is going to magnify our sickness the enemy is going to magnify whatever we're going through he's going to make it look bigger than what it is it's just the shadow but you know what, whenever he said, God says, don't be afraid of the dark. And if we see shadows, like, no, I can foresee. It's a shadow. He wants to get us in the shadow. What It's not going to happen. What's going to happen? And, and I'm, I'm going to ask you, I heard it from someone, but I'm going to take it for myself. I says, have you met anyone that got, you know, that got into a car accident and lost their life because there was a shadow of a truck that hit you? Don't let the shadow of your future, because it looks bleak right now in the darkness that you're in, don't let it. Do not let it persuade you. Do not let it persuade you. And what I'm telling you right now, I'm living it. I'm not letting the darkness persuade me. I'm not letting my moment persuade me right now. I am allowing God and I'm telling God, no, Lord, I'm going to believe that you're bigger, you're greater. There's nothing impossible for you. We need to trust God. You know, growing in Jesus means trusting God when you feel so desperate and so lonely and so confused, saying, thank you, God, right now for my storm. Own it. So what? What are people going to think? They're going to think that you're an overcomer. Let them think whatever other people might not, but hey, I know who I am. I know who my God is, and I am persuading myself that he is bigger. He's bigger. Do you know how hard, it is, how hard it is to say, thank you, Lord, for my brokenness. Thank you, Lord, because in the midst of my mystery, you are actually going to show me your mystery in my life. Thank you for the past two and a half years I have been held. Do you know how hard that is to say thank you to God? But you know, it's a choice. 
because at the end of the day, I do believe who my God is. And you have to believe that he is God. There's nothing in his nature that is bad. There's nothing in his nature that would think any less of you because you are not doing too well. Finally, I'm able to say, you know, I'm okay not being okay. How is that? You're not believing for healing. You're not believing for, no, no, no. Because I am believing for wholeness and healings and deliverance. I can see that. You see, it's inverted. God doesn't want you to fake it until you make it. That's, I don't know who came up with that. I know it sounds good, right? I don't want to fake anything. But you know what it's called? It's called faithing up. Face up. Face up. Let me give you my last scripture. Okay, let me give my last scripture before I forget my point. And come up, please. Come up, baby. It's in Hebrews 12 too. It says, looking away from all of that will distract us. This is me growing up. Focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, the first incentive of our belief in the one who brings our faith to what? He's the one who's going to bring it to pass. We just have to align and follow him. And it says, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, re revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. The Bible says, I think it's in Philippians uh, 1, 6, it says that the good work that he started in you, he says he's able to finish it. Do you know that he never starts something? He doesn't quit on us. We quit on him. He never leaves us. We leave. He never departs. We depart. And then we get mad at him. Like, you left me. He's like, Virginia, I will never leave you. I have never left you. I don't know in this moment if you're living in the worst time of your life I feel like in the last two years I was living the hardest battle of my life the, the biggest storm like a hurricane or something and then you you're praying the storm away right go in Jesus name but you know to overflow with gratitude I don't know and I don't care anymore when God shows up or I just know that he shows up and he's there and that you can live with him and then one day, voila. But you know what I decided to do, which is really hard, is overflow in Thanksgiving. I remember one morning I, I got up and I and it's almost like I can see the storm and everything. And, and I can see that my eyes, I was facing up the storm. And my eyes were so fixated on what's happening or what didn't happen. Or how hurt I was or how confused I was, how disappointed, whatever I was feeling. But then I said, I read the, the chapter and it says that overflow in thanksgiving. And you know the moment I said, thank you, God, for the rain. Thank you for this storm because this storm is actually building up my strength. Thank you because this storm has actually made me stronger. And at the end of this, this storm, at the end on the other side, I am well with him. I am well with him. And I decided to live a life on credit. You know what that means? It means I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like raising a hallelujah. I don't feel like preaching. I don't feel like doing all these things. But I'm going to live my life like if I do. <laughs> Not faking it, but doing it. And you know, it's not really that we're living a life on credit. I'm going to tell you that you're a trust fund baby. Have you heard of the trust fund kids? You have a trust fund here on earth. Jesus left us set up and says, I'm sitting at a trust fund for you. And as you grow, you get it. Have you met people that are trust fund babies? They hit 10 years and then, and then somebody's watching over their finances and they give this amount and they get this amount and they get this amount. And when they get to mature, they get it. 
So that's what we have. It's up to us how much, it, how, how long it takes us to grow. But he says, I already have a trust fund. So you can just withdraw. When the moment that you choose to grow and, and face things up with me, then I release. Because I know that you'll be able to be a good steward with the things that I'm giving you. You know, when you, um, when you look at these images, I don't know about you, but as I was looking, I'm like, man, I'm not getting any younger. You know, when we first started Olive Church, I think I was 34 years old. A baby. <laughs> and, uh, you know, here we are nine years later. And, um, and you look at that child, and, and for us, us that have kids, when they were small, do you remember always looking at your kids and saying, I wonder who Isaac looks like. I wonder who Alexis looks like. And I'm sure we've, as parents, we've all done that, like, oh, you know, my child looks like dad, or, you know, he looks more like me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can't help but think this. When you are born, you look like your parents. But when you die, you look like your decisions. And every single one of us have an opportunity, no matter how much we've missed it, no matter how far we've gotten off, but each and every single person here has an opportunity to come back. If you were here Sunday, I read that verse where Jesus was warning Peter and he told Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you. We remember the word sift. How many remember what the word sift meant? To, to investigate. To what? To examine. To examine. To explore. What else? Huh? Y'all don't remember. That's okay. That's good enough. And what happens is, he said, but don't, but don't fear. Don't worry because I have prayed that your faith would not fail you. And, and we know that that Peter had his falling later, but he, but Jesus told Peter, but don't worry, but when you come back, strengthen your brothers in the faith. And so maybe you've been off for a minute and I'm praying that tonight we can come back and strengthen the brother and not look at our mess, not look at our storm, not look at our setback, not look at our whatever you've experienced as something like, man, I can't believe I've gone through this, but look at it like, this was a moment that God is going to use to strengthen the brethren around me, amen? And that it wasn't just for me, but it's for others, right? Whatever you're experiencing right now, just begin to thank God for that. And that's not easy to thank him when you're in it, but we're all gonna come out of it, amen? If today's message impacted you in any way and you wanna help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.